Good morning. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. <clears throat> My name is Kathy Kemp, and I will be your cantor at today's Mass. Our celebrant is our pastor, Father Bob Gorski, and our deacon is Jay Cormier. The intentions for today's Mass are Frank Swinarski and Mary Lou Kemp. We will be using the Mass of Creation, found in your music issue, number 885. In order to preserve the sacredness of the Holy Mass, kindly silence your cell phones and any other electronic devices. 
for gathering a hymn will be found in your music issue number 308 here at this table number 308 we ask that you sing in the refrain and then verses 1 and 4. If you'd all please stand and take a moment to greet those around you as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Before we celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's take a few moments and call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the, the highest, highest and on earth. earth. Peace, peace to people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you, you we bless you, you we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God Heavenly King, King O God, God, Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray.
O God who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he, what he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I fix him I will fix him like a peg in a a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A Hollywood production company approached a church in Chicago. They were looking for a sanctuary to shoot a wedding scene for a new movie starring comedian Adam Sandler. The producers offered $10,000 to use the church for three days of shooting. The pastor, although he was an admitted fan of Adam Sandler, declined the offer. He felt it inappropriate for the church to be used for the film they had in mind. The producers called back, increasing their offer from $10,000 to $60,000. The pastor had second thoughts. <laughs> but he felt that he could not make this decision alone. I mean, the parish certainly could use the money for some badly needed renovations. So he called together the members of the church council. At the start of the meeting, 18 council members were in favor of taking the money. Five were opposed. The five felt strongly that their church should not be part of a film that would hold up their church's values and beliefs to public ridicule. But the majority argued that the financial payoff would reap benefits long after this movie was forgotten. After two hours, no minds were changed. 
a vote was taken. The parish would take the money and try to patch up things with anyone who was offended. Then one of the senior members of the council spoke up. Look, he said, it seems as if saying yes to this offer is going to hurt some members of our congregation. Not most people, obviously not a majority. So I guess the question isn't about the movie. The question is about us. Is $60,000 worth hurting some of our members? Five minutes later, the vote was taken again. The council voted unanimously to turn down the money. The pastor later said of the decision, we went from polarized to selfless in a matter of seconds. I have mouthed unanswered prayers inviting Jesus to join our meetings dozens of times when he is nowhere to be found. This time I kept my mouth shut and Jesus walked right in. The members of this parish council were confronted by the very question that Jesus asks Peter and the company of disciples in this morning's gospel. Who do you say I am? What does it mean to follow me? What difference does my presence make in your life? Every decision we make, every action we take, proclaims who we believe this Jesus is and how his gospel impacts our lives. As the parish council in Chicago experiences, struggling to answer that question often demands that we put aside our concerns and our needs and our fears in order to say to the world and to ourselves, that God's Christ is in our midst. This morning's gospel is a climactic moment in the life of Jesus. For the first time, a member of Jesus' company acknowledges him as the Messiah, as the Christ. And it's in the rock of that belief, on the rock of Peter's faith, that Jesus establishes his church of peace, justice, and reconciliation. To share Peter's faith is to articulate clearly and without equivocation the question that Jesus asks all of us. Who do you say I am? If our baptisms mean anything, if we seek to make the love of God a reality in our lives, we can't dodge or qualify our answer to that question. Who is this Christ to us? The Christ who preached reconciliation and forgiveness the Christ who revealed the God of compassion and mercy, the Christ who called us to create the kingdom of God here and now. Who do you say I am? It's a question that we often must confront when we're least prepared to answer it, when it's a matter of principle or profit, when it's a question of doing what should be done or what we want done when the right thing to do threatens to push us out of our safe little cocoons. Our answer to Jesus' question reveals more than our faith. It reveals who we are as human beings. Rabbi Harold Kushner tells the story of a congregant who every day for years visited his wife in a nursing home. She suffered from Alzheimer's disease and each day she slipped further and further away in the fog of dementia. But every day he would go to have lunch with her. He would feed her. He would sit with her and show her the pictures of their children, telling her the latest family news and stories. She would look puzzled, ask the same questions over and over again, and remember none of it. He would patiently remind her who he was and explain that they were married and had been married happily for 52 years and they had two daughters and a son and four beautiful grandchildren. He would hold her hand as she drifted in and out of consciousness. Before leaving every day, he would kiss her and tell her how much he loved her. And no sooner was he gone and she would forget that he had even been there. His heartbroken friends would ask him, why do you keep going when she doesn't even know who you are? And he would always reply, because I know who I am. In realizing who Jesus is and what his gospel means to us, we start to understand who we are and what our lives are about. 
Today's gospel asks us exactly what we mean when we profess in the creed our belief in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. What difference it makes when we claim that we have been baptized into his death and resurrection. Our simplest acts of kindness and generosity, our dedication to the cause of what is right and just, our taking the first step toward reconciliation and forgiveness with another, are our clearest and most complete confessions of our faith in the gospel of Jesus as the Messiah and the Redeemer of God. And as a church in Chicago came to realize, you can't put a price on that. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for us men and, and for our salvation, he, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and, and became man. For our, our sake he was crucified in Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son, and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through, through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on God's unfailing promise, we pray for the church and the world. That church leaders and faithful believers practice charity and patience with one another, we pray to the Lord. That temporal rulers and civil leaders resist temptation and root out corruption, we pray to the Lord. That those who know the gift of marriage and friendship remain constant in love through every trial, we pray to the Lord. That this community be healed of every division, we pray to the Lord that trusting in Christ's words to Peter, all those called to follow the Lord as priests, deacons, and in the consecrated life will recognize the gift of their call and follow him faithfully, we pray to the Lord. For all petitions brought to our shrine seeking the intercession of St. Jude, we pray to the Lord. For all of the sick, especially those whose names are listed in our parish bulletin, that God will heal them and restore them to good health, we pray to the Lord. And for what else shall we pray? For all of our prayers, spoken and unspoken, for the people of the Ukraine, for those suffering in the wake of gun violence, for the victims of the fires in Hawaii, and for Frank Swinarski and Mary Lou Kemp, we pray to the Lord. Eternal God, all power is yours to grant. Hear the prayers of your servants and grant what we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd all please join together in the refrain for hymn number 532, God of Mercy, number 532, music issue.
praying, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself for people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ, who is our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. And by the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, in all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but in the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. If you'd all please join together in hymn 355 in your music issue, Bread of Life, number 355, please join in the refrain.
Morning. My name is Diane Swinarski, and I want to share with you a little bit of what RCIA is and what it is not. RCIA stands for the Right of Christian Initiation of Adults. Formally, it is the process in which those persons who have never been baptized, or for those who have been baptized but have not yet received religious instruction about their faith may come and learn and receive the sacraments of baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation. And usually this happens at the Easter Vigil. It does not consist of required books, textbook reading, or any tests. No one is put on the spot or expected to have prior religious education or experience. It is the opportunity to start a relationship with Jesus, or if you already have one, to deepen that relationship. There is fellowship and sharing, and the opportunity to learn what the church teaches and why. There is the chance to ask questions and explore the Bible. There is a time commitment, but anything worth pursuing requires commitment of that kind. Oh, and there is always great food. <laughs> I came into the church through our CIA 34 years ago. That happened because somebody loved me to, enough to invite me to a Catholic Mass one Sunday. And I was absolutely amazed when I got to that Mass because everything I had heard prior to that experience was rather negative regarding the Catholic Church. So I came just because they asked me. What I experienced when I got there was the beauty of the Catholic Church, the beauty of the Mass. And honestly, I was, I was gobsmacked because <laughs> I sat there going, oh my gosh, this whole thing is straight out of the Bible, because everything I had heard about the Catholic Church prior to that, I did not expect that. But I was hooked in one Sunday. The Holy Spirit did a work in my heart that kept me wanting to come back here and learn more. And a few months later, I signed up to do RCIA, which is why, 34 years later, I'm here with you this morning, <laughs> and why I've been on staff for 18 years teaching Bible courses and working to help people come to know Jesus in a deeper way. Our night of inquiry is Sunday, September 10th at 6 p.m., and we'll share more specifics on RCIA at that evening. Again, coming does not assume any kind of commitment. If anyone is interested but cannot make that night, please call Father Bob, Mary Kerrigan, or myself our numbers are listed in the bulletin. 
There are still copies of Father Bob's email regarding the night of inquiry at the back of the church. Please stop and pick one up if you have not yet seen that. I would challenge you this week. My life changed because someone loved me enough to invite me to a mass and share the goodness of God. And I ask you, ask the Holy Spirit to show you who you can invite. He's faithful. He'll either show you someone in your mind, put someone on your heart, or cause you to think about them, and then be courageous, do it, because they may be standing here 34 years later like I am. We thank you for your time and attention. Please pray for the RCIA team and all of those that are being called by God towards this process, that they may hear him and respond. And I hope to see you on the 10th. Thank you. Let us pray. Complete within us, O oh Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, last year, we had a uh, parish picnic, a sort of way of celebrating getting back together again after uh, the pandemic. Uh, we're going to do that again this year on September 17th. However, there's going to be a little twist to it. Uh, it's going to be a Hawaiian luau. And what we're going to do is invite all to attend, and we're also going to make it a fundraiser for the parish in uh, Lahaina, Maui, Maria Lana Kila, which is uh, Our Lady of Victory. So we'll do a dual thing. We'll celebrate as a parish, have some great food, and uh, also help a parish that's in need uh, in Lahaina. So keep that date in mind, uh, September 17th. It'll go from right after 10 o'clock Mass until 2 in the afternoon. Uh, we'll be playing some Hawaiian games. There'll be hula. So make sure that you bring your grass skirt. <laughs> and your coconut shells. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The mighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. If you would all please join together in two verses of hymn 423, the Church's One Foundation, number 423.